In this presentation, we will take a look at the financial statements, focusing in on the balance sheet and on the liabilities to see how the short-term and long-term portion. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Of the loan or notes payable will be broken out. We've got our loan information on the left with the terms and the amortization table. We've got our trial balance. This is just going to be a quick trial balance to give us an idea of how it would look in terms of a trial balance and how we can convert that then to financial statements. Going to the financial statements, we want to combine some accounts to uh, put it into a plus and minus format. Our focus here is on these areas, the liability section. So if we take a look at the balance sheet, in other words, the balance sheet is everything. So this is just a quick trial balance that we're going to convert from a plus and minus system to from a debit and credit system to a plus and minus system. Here are the debits and credits over here. Debits minus the credits equals zero. We can see that we have our two assets. That's all we have. One million two fifty four eighty four. That's our total assets. Here's our total assets. And then we're focusing here on our liabilities. There's only two accounts. So that's uh, 112,655. Uh, that'll be our liabilities. And then this is all of our equity. So remember the whole income statement is part of equity. That adds up to 1,141,429. And that's what's gonna be in equity. So these two numbers should match out if we get these two numbers right. Now the only problem here is that we're, we need to break out between short term and long term. This is kind of a pain when it comes to loans, especially installment loans that have monthly payments that are partially interest and partially um, principal. Why? Because we have to break out the interest and principal. We have to break out the short term portion. So that means that we can't just pull the loan amount here into the into the financial statements because part of it's short term or current and part of it's long term. In other words, to properly do the financial statements, we got to break out the short term portion of of the loan so there's a few different ways uh, we could do that we could in this format we're just going to say that we're going to have one account on the trial balance and then we'll fix it when we get to the financial statements rather than having two accounts on the trial balance so before i get any more depth into that let's just take a look at the financials remember it's in order liabilities are going to be in order of current liabilities and long-term liabilities the current liabilities, all the current liability means is that it's due within a year. It's an arbitrary number. So within a year, the current liabilities are due. So if we have a loan that's going to be longer than a year, but we make monthly payments, then we're going to pay part of the principal within the year and part outside the year. So that's what we need to break out. We need to say, okay, this number represents the total loan, but it has the current and long-term portion in it. And we need to say, okay, how much of it is due in the current year and how much of it is long term? So I'm going to go back to our, our trial balance and see how we can break that out. Now, there, there's a couple ways we can do this. This is where software, this is where you almost have to like fix it a little bit uh, and do the adjusting entries or do some kind of adjustments at the end of the month or make the financial statements because a lot of times the software has trouble to make this kind of distinction. Why? Because if we look at the trial balance accounts, it may make sense for us to just put the full loan in one account. Uh, it, it, that might be the easiest thing to do. That's what we'll do here. There's a couple different options we could have to do this. Because if we put all the loan in one account, it'll tie out to the amortization table. Here's the amortization table. The loan started at 100000 uh, We made three payments. We properly allocated between interest and principal. So here's the 2195 uh, that's expense. Here's the principal amount at the end of the time period. So we're saying that that's proper right now. This is where we are as of the date of the financial statements. And that's what ties out to the trial balance. Now, if we try to say, we could try to break out the short-term portion on the trial balance, 
but that becomes more difficult to manage because it won't, you know, we have to look at two accounts then every time we want to tie it out to, uh, to the amortization table. It might be easier, in other words, to just have one account because that's easier to tie out to the amortization table. And then when we create the financial statements, we're going to have to break that one number out. The other reason that's, an, that's useful is because every time a new payment is made, the short-term portion will differ because there's a difference between the principal and the interest portion. So if we break out between short-term and long-term by having two separate accounts on the trial balance, those two accounts will never be correct until we make adjustments at the end of the time period. It would be part of our adjusting entry process. So first we're going to start off here. We're going to say we just have one account and that's going to tie out to our loan amount. But then when we make the financial statements, we can't just pull this one number to the financials because we got to break it out between short term and long term. We'll do that with a worksheet, kind of like a subsidiary uh, ledger, a subsidiary account that'll give us detail. So to do that, here is our amortization table. We've got our payments. We've got we've got our uh, principal at the beginning. All of our payments are the same. Interest changes, of course, as does the principal portion. So here's where we are now. That's what total should be at the end, and we got to break out short term and long term. The thing that's confusing about this is is note that we, we're not going to break out the short term in terms of the amount of payments that are due. In other words, within a year, that's twelve that's twelve months, and these are monthly payments. So you would you would think it would be well. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, or thirty thirty eight thousand one sixty that we're going to pay in the next 12 months. Wouldn't that be current? Because that's what we're actually paying in the next 12 months. Uh, so I would think that would be, but it's not. Why? Because part of this is interest. And the interest, you, you can't include that, not because we're not going to pay it in the next 12 months, but because it's not really something that's been incurred yet. Because interest has to do with us earning, renting the money. So this interest, these interest amounts here that are part of that payment, haven't happened yet. We haven't incurred the interest yet because we haven't held on to the money and used it in order to help generate revenue. So the interest portion we have to take out, even though this is how much we're paying, it's not a current liability because we don't really owe the interest yet. If we paid the loan back right now, in other words, we would not owe this interest. So even though we're probably going to pay it and not pay the loan back right now, we're not going to include that in the current liability portion because we haven't incurred it yet. What we will include is just the principal portion. So we're only going to pick up the principal portion. So if we're here right now, then the principal portion is 12 months out. It's going to be this plus 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 this 12. So I'm just going to sum that up over here. This is going to be our ending line here. So if this is going to be where we're at now, this is the ending point that we're at now. This then is the ending point we'll be at at the end of 12 months, meaning this is the long-term portion. This is after 12 months, we'll still owe 61,573. And we'll still owe interest on top of that, but we haven't incurred it yet. So, and then the interest portion is the difference. So we can do that a couple different ways. It's gonna be equals the sum of all, uh, all these principles. So that's the 31. And obviously that's gonna be the difference between the 92,655 minus the 61,573. That's the 3182. So if this is where we're at now, we're going to break this out between the short term, 3182, which is just the principal and the long term. That's what's still left over after a year. And that's what where we will pull these two numbers from. So the 20,000 liabilities is from here. And then the current portion, we're breaking this number out, is going to be equal to the current portion is what we broke out here. And then the long-term portion is gonna be equal to the long-term portion here. So hopefully that's, you can see those. We'll make that like that. So there's gonna be our two amounts. And of course, if we add those two up, I'm holding down control. It adds up to 92,655, and that's going to be the 92,655 here. 